Did you know that the average podcast does not make it past seven episodes? And that's fine if you're doing a mini series or you're covering a specific topic that only needs a certain number of episodes, but what about a podcast that is intended to run indefinitely? How can you definitely get over that slump? How can you keep having a pod blast while creating your podcast? I'm not exactly sure why seven became the magic number for podcast episodes, but I do have a theory that's based just on my own personal experience. Once you decide to make a podcast, those first few episodes are super exciting. Even if you have to schedule things with a co-host or work out guests, everything is just more exciting because it's all brand new. But after a while, that newness wears off and then the realities of the production routine start to set in. Then the podcast might start feeling like it's taking time away from other areas in your life and it starts to feel more like an obligation and less like this really fun project that you are excited about. So then you might decide to take a break and it can seem really easy to just skip a week. But if you don't have a clear plan of how to actually come back from that break, then skipping one or two weeks turns into three or four weeks, and then time goes on and your podcast becomes this thing that people just see you and go, are you still doing that thing, the, the podcast thing? And ultimately your podcast then finds itself coming to a very unceremonious end. So here are two strategies that I've used to make it to episode eight and beyond. <laughs> First one is to make sure your idea has legs. Because coming up with an idea for a podcast is easy, but coming up with an idea that can go on and on for an extended period of time is way more difficult. Even beyond more concrete things like scheduling time for hosts or guests or production time, finding an idea that you can come back to episode after episode is really not as easy as it seems. And as anyone who's taken my podcast ideation course, the Podcaster Idea Book can tell you, Sometimes the idea you're most excited about isn't actually the most sustainable. When coming up with a concept for your podcast, it's important to ask yourself how you can approach it in a way that won't exhaust all of your ideas after only just a few episodes. My recommendation is if your podcast centers around a specific topic to brainstorm out a few episode ideas, 10 is the magic number that seems to work well for me, so I'd recommend at least 10, and that will give you an idea of whether or not the show actually has those legs that we talked about. If the idea is truly legcellent because you don't want to be defeated legs and feet it's a if you're able to brainstorm 10 ideas and then you get through actually creating those 10 shows by that time you'll probably have a pretty good idea of what the show should be or is turning into because every idea kind of evolves on its own creatively. If you're trying to decide between a few different ideas, then I just do this strategy for all of those ideas. I literally just get a piece of paper, put each show idea down, and then put how many episode ideas I can come up with for each show. And that usually makes it pretty clear which ideas have enough to kind of keep going and which ones I'll sort of run out of steam with after a few episodes. However, say you have two ideas, one of them you're really excited about, one of them you're pretty excited about, this one that you're really excited about, you only have three or four episode ideas. This one that you're less excited about, maybe you have 10, 15 ideas for. It makes a lot more sense to go with this one. And as you go through that, you will probably, hopefully, find the excitement for it as you dive into it a little deeper. And as time goes on and your podcasting abilities improve, this other idea that only has three or four episodes, maybe it will be able to be developed into a bigger idea that has multiple episodes and that can still turn into its own show down the line at some point. So just because you don't use one of your ideas right now doesn't mean that you'll never use it at some point in the future. And now let's talk about the second strategy for making your podcast more sustainable and that reason is seasons. If you remember a little while ago, I said taking breaks can be dangerous for your show but it can also be hugely beneficial if done in the right way. I've personally worked on a number of podcasts over the years, but my own personal podcast I started about four years ago, and it's almost 140 episodes in at the time that I'm recording this. And when I started it, it was just to share my ideas and sort of get all this stuff that it felt like it was just building up in my brain out into the world. It's basically like a free therapy session. And after 21 episodes, which is a decent amount, I started to feel like, I kind of got that out of my system. Like I shared everything I wanted to share. Where do I go from here? And so I decided that I didn't want to end the show, but I did want to take a break for a few weeks to sort of figure out how I wanted to approach it going forward. And what I decided to do was that first run of episodes was very kind of internally focused. It was me getting all the stuff that had built up for years out of my brain. And then I wanted to shift it to be more listener focused, to explore topics that I thought would be helpful, beneficial, or at least mildly entertaining, 
to anyone who might listen. And after that break, it just made sense in my mind to call that season two. So then I started another run of episodes that was slightly different in theme. And since the first season was 21 episodes, I wanted this season to be 21 episodes. And I ended up doing that for five 21 episode seasons over the period of a couple of years. But then I realized 21 is a lot and 21 weeks is a big chunk of the year and it started to feel a little exhausting. And I started noticing when I was hitting episode 12 or 13, I was feeling a little bit tired and kind of just, it was feeling more like an obligation. So then I decided to switch things up and do 10 episode seasons, which I've now been doing for four seasons. And 10 episodes for me has been great because it's long enough to sort of come up with a theme or a purpose for the whole season, explore that in enough depth, but it's also short enough that there's kind of always the light at the end of the tunnel. I can always see when I can take a break and being able to take that break really lets me recharge those creative batteries. So when the next season starts, I'm really excited. It never feels like an obligation anymore. I'm always excited to record an episode. And because I know I'm going to come back for a season, I usually try to end a season with an idea for what the next group of episodes will be about. And so the break isn't this thing that will go on indefinitely. I usually let myself have two to four weeks off and then I come back for the next episode. So I get to enjoy my break and I don't have to worry that the show is just gonna sort of fizzle out and never come back because I already have a plan in place for what's gonna happen when the break ends. If I need to take a break, if life happens and I need to miss a week, that's fine. I try not to put too much pressure on myself, but I also try to plan around that. Sometimes that might mean recording episodes in advance and scheduling them so even if I can't record one week, there's still an episode that goes out. I do think 10, maybe 12 is kind of a sweet spot because there's sort of this natural momentum that builds around season premieres and season finales. I have found, even though they're really no different than other episodes, the fact that it's the first episode or the last episode makes me and the listeners kind of more excited about it and they sort of have a different feel. And then there's really not enough time in a shorter like 10 episode season to get bored with the show, either for me as the person producing it or for somebody listening to it. And then there's enough of a break where the listeners and me start to miss it. So if you don't know where to begin with seasons, I would definitely recommend 10 episodes is a great place to get started. And then you can add your season seasoning to taste to make sure your show is working for you and your listeners the best way possible. Now, with all that being said, it is important to recognize that sometimes ideas do just run their course. And if you feel like every time you're creating an episode that you're trying to choke an idea to life, it might be time to just let it go and move on to something else. There's definitely a fine line to walk between pushing yourself through a creative slump and knowing when something has reached its natural end. Ultimately though, I think having a podcast should be fun. Even if your show is about a serious topic or something that's more in depth, I think you should have fun or at least it should be really satisfying to create and produce and anything you can include in your workflow to help that happen, not just once or twice, but pretty much every time you make an episode, is a really great thing to do. You might even say it's the key to creating a cast that lasts. And speaking of things that last, thank you to everyone who helps support my channel through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. And there are two more things I wanna talk about before totally wrapping up the video. The first is the idea of getting started. I think having a plan and an idea is really important, but I just want to remind and encourage you that it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to have every word scripted before you jump in and get started. You don't have to have perfect equipment. If you're watching this video, you definitely have enough equipment to get started to at least some degree. There are free platforms out there like Anchor, which will help you distribute your show to the entire world. And you can jump in right now today, creating your first episode of a podcast and then let it grow over time. And the other thing, of course, is podcasting courses. This is not a shameless self-plug. I promise you I'm full of shame. I do have two podcasting courses and they're a little different. There's the Podcaster Idea Book, which I mentioned earlier. That will help you come up with ideas for a podcast. It does not at all talk about production. It's just how to come up with an idea, how to decipher different ideas, which one you might wanna work with, and how to plan out your first season of episodes. And my other course is the Podcaster Playbook, which is totally a production course. So it assumes you already have the idea, and then it runs you through start to finish how to produce your first audio podcast episode. Talk a little bit about video podcasts, but it's mostly audio production. And by the time you're done, you will have your first episode finished, but you will also, and this is very important, have created a totally sustainable workflow to help you keep making episode after episode. Neither course talks about how to monetize your podcast because I'm a firm believer that one, it's very hard to make money on a podcast, and two, 
you should be doing a podcast for fun. Like most creative endeavors should come from a place of intrinsic motivation and satisfaction. And down the line, if revenue or something comes along, that's great. But if you start out with that in mind as being your purpose, it's just a lot easier to fail and a lot easier to stop having fun along the way. So there's links to both those courses in the description if you're interested. And more than anything, no matter how you get started or what resources you use, I hope you have a lot of fun creating your podcast.